Hi everyone. Are you a mom that has ever asked yourself, what do I do when my adult child resents me? I know that's a question I get a lot as well. And today I'm gonna to dive into that topic a little bit. So for those of you that are brand new here to my channel, I just wanna welcome you. My name is Sally Harris and I am a mom who walked a difficult road with my own daughter for over a decade. And when her life spiraled in one direction, mine went crazy in the other. And I promise you it does not have to be that way. And today, let's talk about resentment. Um, I know a lot of you have reached out to me um, about resentment more than ever before, to be honest. And I feel that it's one of those things that we know when we feel resentful. Um, but this, I wanna kind of switch the table here today and what do you do when your adult child resents you? So the, I deal a lot with the moms who are feeling resentful towards their child, but but like I said, I wanna switch it up here a little bit today um, and take a look at possibly from your adult child's point of view and yours together. So this is primarily going to be for those of you that have some communication with your adult child. Now, maybe you don't at the moment and that could change at any day. I, I want you to know that and I want you to have faith in that because when it does, this way you'll be prepared to have those conversations. So don't just sit idle and assuming that it's never gonna happen because I believe that it will. Um, there's a huge impact on both you and your adult son or daughter when there's resentment taking place. Resentment is literally a stony heart, right? We, we It carries through life with us, whether we like it or not, whether we admit it or not, but you become resentful in one area of your life, it's gonna trickle down. And so I want you to know that obviously, as soon as we are feeling resentment towards anyone in general, right? But in this case, your child, or maybe your child is feeling this way about you, we need to open up the lines of communication. And to do that properly with empathy and all the things, it takes two adults who are willing, right? And it may be you're in a situation right now, like I said, where your son or daughter is not willing to have that conversation. Even though we're not talking about an early teen, 18 here, we're talking about an adult who would hopefully be able to have some of those hard conversations, but maybe they're just not there. Maybe they're not ready for that, or maybe they don't want to at this moment. Um, we can't force someone to talk to us. And so what I want to share with you is that when we unravel the cause of the resentment, maybe you already know what it is, maybe you don't. So things that it could be just to help you jog your memory maybe, um, and I, but I also don't want you to sit and ruminate over this constantly. But I just want you to be aware that many times, literally it's unmet expectations. It's probably one of the biggest ones I've seen. Um, outside of any type of physical, emotional abuse, that kind of a thing, that's separate, right? That is, you need to seek a therapist. Um, your child hopefully would be maybe be willing at some point be able to do therapy with you. Um, but for you moms who are just struggling with trying to figure out what it is, maybe you don't know. The communication breakdowns, there's past hurts. Like there's, as a mom, there's so many things, so many hats that we wear as our kids are growing up. And yes, we have communication breakdowns. <laughs> Yes, we hurt one another, we're human. You're gonna hurt your child emotionally uh, where their feelings got hurt and like and vice versa, they're hurting your, your feelings. But resentment is just something that sets in deep, right? Resentment is a choice to get rid of. It is a choice. And there are a lot of different needs from the parent and, your chi and the child on what they're looking for in communication. So we really need to look and really um, propose that we could sit down and have a conversation. And if you did, and you were able to do that with your child at this, at this time, what would that look like? Well, I would encourage it to be, um, a place where you can offer empathy, a place where you can offer healing and forgiveness, a place where you can listen with two ears and speak with one mouth, but do more listening than talking. One of the biggest things that I feel, and I've done this myself, is when you're hearing your son or daughter talk to you and sharing their hurts, but yet in your mind, the story didn't go as they said, don't correct them. Don't correct them in that time and place. 
There may be a, there may be a time, another time to be able to do that. But don't sit and correct them without hearing them through because their brain, like they're needing to just export all of this. They're wanting to get this off their chest, out of their head. They may not deliver it even with a lot of love. If they're that angry, they may not be delivering it in the best way. Um, but if you're able to hang tight and see them through and actually try to have that conversation, and that's probably one of the hardest conversations you'll ever have. But if you can be respectful of each other's emotions and perspectives and memories, because remember, whatever you know, our perception of a situation or a conversation or an event is our reality. You and I could be in the same place and something could happen or be said and I take it one way and you take it another. And that's where communication breakdown comes in and that is where so many past hurts come in or you didn't protect me or you didn't stick up for me, you didn't, you know, you said this or so and so said you said this. So there's just so many unmet expectations and needs and things that are blown out of proportion many times that shouldn't be and then there's times where absolutely things things have happened. And like I said, maybe your child is resenting you for something that you know you did. And just remember to always hold a place of forgiveness for your part. I'm not telling you to forgive and go offer apologies for something you didn't do or you have, you know, you can apologize for, I'm sorry you feel that way, you know, but I don't recall that, but, but I'm sorry that that's your perception. People just want to be heard. And I think if we all started just listening more than we talk, Oh, there would be so much restoration. but And I know that some of you are watching this and you're thinking, I would love to have that conversation with my son or daughter, but they won't talk to me. Then you hold tight. You hold tight to the day that you can have this conversation and you use these principles then. So I hope that helps you. You know, resentment is another one of these topics that I, like I said, I get a lot and a lot lately. And so I am going to be doing a summer workshop series um, and again, if you want to click the link below just to just to get more information in an email when I start sharing all of that. But resentment is going to be the second topic that I do. The first one is who am I? Where moms are going to be taking a look at um, looking in the mirror and figuring out who they are again. And the second one is going to be on resentment. So I'll send you more information at a later date. But if you want more info, go ahead and um, you can add yourself to the wait list. Also, if you and I have never chatted before and you want a consultation, the link for a discovery call is also below and that's an opportunity for you and I to chat and me to understand more about what's going on with your situation and how I can help you um, through whether it's through my group coaching program, one-on-one -on -one coaching, my course, my workshops, whatever the case may be. Um, and I can share that with you then and give you more information on what I feel could help you. So I hope that helps and you have a great day.